Welcome to Airports Revealed, an ongoing series peeking behind the operations of the world's gateways to the sky. In this video, you'll go behind the scenes at one of the fastest growing airports in the world. It's the hub for not one, but two major U.S. airlines. It's an international gateway, a logistics and cargo powerhouse, and it does it all on a compact footprint dwarfed by similar airports. Hello, Jet Setters. I'm Jeb Brooks from Greenergrass.com. This it's Airports Revealed. Welcome to Seattle Tacoma International Airport. To get a better sense of the area, let's get up in the sky. With more than 4 million people, the Seattle metropolitan area is the 15th largest in the United States. It's expected to continue growing, which is why this airport is dynamic and constantly changing. In 2019, it was the eighth busiest U.S. airport in terms of passengers. And to keep up with that kind of volume, the airport has a number of tremendous projects we'll explore back on the ground. After a light rail ride from downtown Seattle, I headed to the offices of the Port of Seattle who own and operate the airport. There, I spoke with International Operations Manager Justin Lowe, who provided an overview of SEA. We average about 1,100 to 1,300 aircraft operations a day. An aircraft operation is as fine as one aircraft landing or taking off. So we have one aircraft landing or taking off just about every minute here at SEA. In 2019, our passenger numbers peaked at about 70,000, give or take, passengers departing a day. So that meant that we had about 70,000 passengers arriving into Seattle on any one day. Um, so we are slowly recovering from that, but we're, uh, you know, we've got a lot of passengers still coming through. We're around 50,000 departing, 50,000 coming in each day. Even with rising passenger numbers, there's one huge, or should I say tiny, challenge unique to SEA. We are a very small and constrained airport when you consider large airports like Denver and, and Dallas-Fort Worth that have tens of thousands of acres. Here at SEA we have approximately 2,500 acres, give or take. Uh, the airspace around SEA is one of the busiest and most condensed airspaces in the United States. You have SEA here on the south end, Four miles to the north, we have Boeing Field, King County International, and then four miles to our northeast, you have the Renton Municipal Airport. Both those airports to our north have large aircraft operations. You've got the Boeing Company operating Boeing 73 Maxes at both. At Boeing Field, you have the KC-46 and now the 777X program. Uh, and also you have a lot of general, general aviation aircraft, so your little Cessnas and Cirruses that are taken off that you know get close to our airspace or close to Renton. So it takes a lot of coordination between the three airports and the air traffic control towers at the three airports to make sure that aircraft can come and, come and go safely without having any issues. And so that's a lot of airplanes in a 24-hour period in a very, very small and condensed uh, airspace. Thanks to its strategic location in the Pacific Northwest, where it's nestled between much of the U.S. population and Asia, along with vibrant manufacturing and distribution enterprises of its own, the cargo scene here at SAA is also pretty dynamic. Ken Galka is the Air Cargo Operations Manager for the Port of Seattle. During maybe a common day, we have about 20 or 25 all cargo flights that, that, that take place. Uh, that includes everything from a 747 to a, a propeller plane, a feeder plane. In terms of all cargo out, out airlines, it's about six or seven, um, including, say, a FedEx and, uh, and Prime Air, but also cargo comes in the belly of the passenger aircraft as well, and that's a huge component for the international here at SeaTac. For me now, the job is just to make this a, a, as convenient, pleasant, and as efficient as possible. Cargo is not the most dramatic, uh, you know, it doesn't compete with our, our older brothers in the passenger terminal, but what it does is it supports the regional economic vitality. Everything's got to get shipped. Indeed, everything does have to get shipped. And one of the ways the Port of Seattle has made that, and so much more, move smoothly through this region is with the addition of a third runway. We headed over to the western side of the airport to take a look. Back in 1992, planning for a new runway began. At the time, the airport had only two parallel runways that were a mere 800 feet apart. That's simply too close for simultaneous operations during low visibility. You can clearly see the development of the runway in these satellite images, but what you can't see is the complexity of its construction. SEA is up on a plateau, and the expansion required a massive earth-moving project. 
Our drive took us alongside the new runway, which was built up on top of that embankment. It took half a million truckloads of dirt to fill this hillside to be level with the existing runway up there. Workers poured 130,000 cubic yards of concrete and 35,000 tons of asphalt to create a 1.6 mile long, 150 foot wide, 17 inch deep runway. Finally, on November 20th, 2008, the FAA approved the opening of the third runway to ease congestion. As an utterly fascinating footnote in history, both Dulles and O'Hare opened new runways on the exact same day. Maybe November 20th should be National Runway Day. From there, we took a ride down Runway 16 Center. Have you ever wondered how runways get named? Or rather numbered? Well, it's related to their compass headings. See, this runway faces 164 degrees, so it's called Runway 16. And because it's in the middle of this somewhat unusual three runway configuration, it's called 16 Center. But there's more to runways than just their headings. How about one of the most vital components of an airport that almost none of us ever even think about? It's the surface material used in runways, taxiways, and ramp areas. Depending on the particular use case, it could be concrete or asphalt. Here in Seattle, they rely heavily on concrete, which in some places can be as deep as two feet. The care and maintenance of these surfaces is critical to maintaining their integrity and function. A great deal of time and attention is spent on this activity here at SEA in order to extend the life of their concrete. At most airports, concrete has to be resurfaced every 20 years or so, but because of the rigorous maintenance program here at SEA, they've doubled that in some places. In the summer of 2021, the Pacific Northwest faced an extended heat wave that saw concrete reach temperatures of upwards of 140 degrees it's situations like heat waves and other irregular operations that bring the many professionals who keep SEA running to the fore. Let's go back to Justin Lowe to learn a little bit more about what he and his colleagues do to make sure the airport runs smoothly. Uh, the airport duty manager is responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of the airport from landside parking garage, landside loops to the terminal, out to the airfield ramps, taxiways, runways. So. From the time you enter the, at the airport to the time you are departing via airplane or coming in the, the opposite way, we're making sure that the airport is running safely, securely, efficiently, and also in compliance with all of our federal, state, local regulations and any grant assurances or anything like that. There's a lot of behind the scenes items that take place at every airport, especially those airports that service commercial airlines like we do here at SEA. Without those thousands of employees, both from the port and our contractors and our airline partners, uh, without all those workers here on, on a 24-7 basis, this airport would not function. Let's go check out the terminal spaces. Uh, this is a, an airport that's under nearly constant renovation, and a lot of those benefits can be seen right now. So let's go check them out. The airport opened back in 1944 when the U.S. Army took control of the nearby Boeing Field during World War II. Today, it's an international gateway, particularly to Asia, and a hub for not one, but two major U.S. airlines. According to the Port of Seattle, 31 airlines serve 91 nonstop domestic and 28 international destinations from here. Justin shared a little bit more about the number of gates that the airport has. Right now we have just around 90 to 95 gates. Uh, changes from day to day as we're doing construction, taking some offline, putting them back in after we replace a jet bridge or redo the, the holding area where people sit. While a lot of passengers connect to other cities through Seattle, there are also a lot of people who begin or end their trips here. That's called origin and destination traffic, or O&D. And it's also why SEA has a rather unexpected claim to fame. SEA is also home to the world's second largest parking garage. It's right there. The largest? It's at the West Edmonton Mall in Canada. The growth of SEA has been fueled by a cocktail of population growth and competition. First, the Pacific Northwest continues to grow with more and more people moving to the area because of its beautiful landscapes, blossoming economy, and sturdy infrastructure. Second, in part because of that population growth along with its convenient location, both Alaska Airlines and Delta Airlines have laid claim to SEA as a hub. 
Now, all of this growth has to be matched with investment in carefully planned projects. That's why the Port of Seattle has committed more than $2 billion to a number of critical expansion projects. Included among them are several highly visible improvements, some of which have already been completed or are nearly done. The 40-year-old North Satellite has been modernized and expanded by more than 200,000 square feet. It's architecturally stunning with huge windows. It's also home to what, in my opinion, is the best airport lounge in the United States, Alaska Airlines Flagship Lounge. You can really feel uh, how much energy and effort went into the construction of this space. When I visited, there was still more to do. The baggage system will also be improved upon. This is something else that passengers don't always think about when they're traveling through an airport. The central terminal is being renovated. The windows provide some of the best views from any public space in any airport in the United States, so I cannot wait for this to be done. But perhaps the most dramatic and visually impactful project at the airport today is the new and expanded International Arrivals Facility, or specifically the walkway over there. This walkway from the south satellite over the top of Concourse A to the new structure is 85 feet in the air, which is high enough for, and get this, it's high enough for a 777 to pass underneath and in the unlikely event that while it's doing so, its front landing gear fails and it tips forward, the tail still won't touch the walkway. This thing is huge. It's so big, in fact, that it was built on the airfield over in the cargo area and trucked across the ramp for installation. It's also home to one of the 10 longest escalators in the United States. Airports Revealed is also a forum for aviation professionals to share their career paths in the hopes that it may inspire some of you to pursue similar trajectories. Both Ken and Justin shared fascinating stories of how they got where they are today. I'll link to a full video with those interviews in the description below. Airports are high pressure, high stress environments. It's, we feel the need to hurry up and get to our connecting gate. We don't wanna miss our flight. We wanna make sure we get to baggage claim before our bag does. I've been there too many times. It's just the nature of this kind of environment. However, that's one of the reasons I'm excited about this series, Airports Revealed. Because I wanna help you get familiar with everything that happens inside airports so they can be become less stressful and more enjoyable. After a day spent at SEA, I left with a newfound appreciation for this unique airport. To run such a massive operation on what amounts to a tiny plateau only four square miles can't help but impress. Add to that the massive projects going on all the time at this place, and you've got one of the most impressive gateways to the sky. Between now and the next time, see you at the airport.